Uh, my name is Roger. I'm 76 years old. I've been retired now for uh, 11 or 12 years, roughly. And um, my previous work history, um, well, I have a degree in automotive technology um, that I, I graduated back in 1968. I worked for the Lubrizol Corporation for uh, a number of years. I rebuilt oil test engines, uh, specifically Oldsmobile 425 cubic inch engines, plus uh, uh, other duties there. And um, I have quite a bit of experience putting V8 engines together. And uh, that includes uh, honing, fitting piston rings, bearings, crankshafts, uh, a cylinder has the whole nine yards. Um, I did rebuild the 312 in uh, this 56 Thunderbird. It was, it was pretty tired when I bought it about almost 40 years ago maybe 38 years ago, 36 years ago, right around there. I had it for a number of years. It sat for a long time. Then I finally, about 10, 11 years ago, I pulled the engine, had the transmission professionally rebuilt, and um, I had the, uh, the engine bored out 30 over. I put a better camshaft in it. I took the heads and put Stellite inserts so you could run unleaded gas anywhere. Um, and I rebuilt it, to, and I had bigger intake valves put in, so it's got more power. I have a modern carburetor on it. I've got a Power Master um, alternator in the generator case, so if you look at it, you can't tell. It looks just like a, a, a generator. Anyway, it's 95 amps, so it wakes up the whole car. Um, electrical systems in the mid-50s were generator controlled, and they just weren't as reliable as, as we have today. Anyway. The car runs good, it's strong, and it's got, it's got, uh, uh, the standard horsepower on these motors with the single four barrel was 260. Uh, my estimate on this is at least uh, uh, 50 to 80 horsepower more because it is a very strong runner. And it's got a three speed Fordomatic in it, but the Fordomatic to make it a three speed, you had to manually shift low. You put it low and then you punched it and then when the car was going 45 or 50, you shifted up in a drive and then right back in the low and it stayed locked in second. Then you just, that second wind out to 85 or 90 and shift it into high. So the car is, is pretty quick. Um, it's fun to drive. Uh, is it modern like, like, like today's cars? No, but it, it's fun to drive and uh, it starts good. I have uh, Petronix uh, pointless ignition on it. I've modernized it. It's very reliable, it's, and I have an electric fuel pump on it. So if you let them sit for weeks and weeks and weeks, you put the electric fuel pump on it, it fills up the carburetor, you pump it four or five times, and boom, it starts. So it's a reliable car, it's a fun car to drive. Uh, I'm gonna give you a quick review of the work that I've done on this uh, um, Thunderbird engine. Um, this, this engine is the Ford Y-Block 312. It's been bored out 30 thousandths, and I have an electronic uh, um, Pertronix pointless deal in here, uh, which means you don't have to change ignition points, which is a nice deal. And here is the Power Master uh, alternator in the generator case. As you can see from looking at it, it looks exactly like a generator. And it's 95 amps, and it, it just wakes up the entire electrical system. Anyway, there's power steering on this. I have an aluminum radiator with the extra cooling package, which includes the water pump here, and a seven-bladed fan. I think it's seven blades. And uh, it's a stock cast iron exhaust manifold, dual exhaust. And uh, there's power brakes on it over there. And that's pretty much the deal. And it's a Ford automatic transmission that's been rebuilt, so that, that's in good shape. Um, that's the, the standard battery, and that's... I'm guessing it's about two years old now. I have I keep a charger on it, uh, you know, one of those trickle chargers. And the car starts, it's got, we'll show you the um, fuel pump in the trunk. Oh yeah, we're, we're just gonna show you, it's just dead cold. The car's been sitting here for at least two weeks. So we're, we're gonna show you what the starting procedure is. Uh, you put the electric fuel pump on, you can hear it run. We'll show you where it is in the trunk here. Uh, the all uh, 56s came with the Continental kit, and you push this rod down, it lets the it lets the uh, 
the, the tire pivot forward. I have a full size spare that I it's not in there now, but it, I will, it comes with the car that um, I just lay in the trunk. There is the uh, Stuart Warner. Um, this is a, the real deal Stuart Warner from the 60s and 70s. I don't know when they stopped making them, but I happen to have a, a, a couple of them in my basement and I put them in the car, um, mainly because when you let a car, this, this car sits, you don't drive it in the winter. Of course, it's snowy and, and, and crappy outside here. So it sits and you can come out and start it once in a week. But the carburetors on these cars will dry up. So you have to pump fuel in there. If you don't have an electric fuel pump, it's a good idea to add one because you can turn it on before you, you start the engine. And of course, you know, everybody today is, is used to driving a fuel injected car. That's a completely different system. A carburetor has to be connected to your foot, and that's the deal. So I turn this on, it fills up the carburetor, you pump it four times, turn the key, and the car starts. Uh, so this is the procedure. Put your window down too, that way we can hear you. There's non power windows. <laughs> well, what, we're power steering fast. and power brakes, that's power it. Power steering and power brakes, right? And it's a power seat. Oh really? Yeah, power seats right here on the uh, on the uh, door there. The door, and uh, that's it for that. I put new carpet in it. The fuel tank's new. The fuel line is new. Uh, the springs are new. Um, everything is pretty much new. Turn the key to the on position, and then turn the fuel pump on. Wrong switch. You can hear it. Slowing down, meaning it's now when it full. slows down, that means the carburetor is full. You can go ahead and turn the fuel pump off. Then you pump the pedal four to five times. Let me get over by the engine. Hold on. Turn the key. Yeah, it runs good. Yeah, it runs good. Yeah. 
gas you run? I, you run regular gas in this. The compression is around eight and a half and nine to one. Uh, like I say, I put the bigger intake valves in it from the uh, ECZ cylinder heads. Um, and the 57 and 58 312 were the best ones uh, to buy because they had the most horsepower. But uh, this engine got phased out by the early, early 60s. And of course they went to the the 352, 390, 427 inch, which is similar to this. It's a wide block, deep skirt design, and uh, they made millions of those. You know, they put the 390 in everything. Yeah, you know. dump trucks, everything. Yeah, especially in trucks. Right. Well, why don't we let it warm up? We'll take it for a little ride. Okay. Do you want to point out the imperfections on the body? Yeah. Um, the main imperfections on the body, uh, you could see here. Uh, I think I uh, something fell off a shelf and hit this. I took it out with a uh, uh, a dolly, but you can see there it, it, it needs a little work. It's a little bumpy there. The same. You think this is original paint or no? This is original paint. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and here, there's a little dent here. And a little bit of this kit. I put some uh, touch-up paint on there. Oh, yeah. And then uh, the chrome in the back. The chrome in the back isn't bad except for this spot. Now, I put some silver paint on here and got the rust out of there. It probably should be, should be re-chromed if you want to make it into a show car. It, it's a good driving car. It's fun to drive, and uh, I have gapless piston rings in it, so it's got good compression, and it gets decent mileage for a V8. What do you think it gets? I, I'm guessing it gets between 15 and 20, at least. Yeah. You know. Wow. And, uh, of course, the convertible top, you have to put the convertible top down to put the hard top on. Yeah, and the hard top's got, it's, yeah, you know, there, it's dirty. There, there's a few spots. It there might be some be scratches out. here. Yeah. Um, and uh, the convertible top has a few little 
holes in the side here. I don't know if, if Mary Ann's got that on those other pictures. She might because they had it. This this top wasn't on, and these white wall wheels weren't on. The skirts weren't on. Are you including the other tires and the other the other uh, 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 tires and wheels? I can include. I don't know if you would want them. Yeah. Um, they have radial tires on it, and of course these are bias plies, and they came with the car when I bought it. Now you can see there's a little rust on the wheel there, but that's not a big deal. Yeah, this all clean yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. That, that you can sand off and, and, and rattle can that. Well, I don't know if I'd rattle can it, but well, all depends on what the buyer yeah, wants yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's some, looks like there's some minor yeah. stuff going on yeah, here. There's some minor stuff going on there that, that could be touched up, you know. You have to remember the car is uh, 1956. Yeah, it was 60, uh, yeah. or no. It's 67 years old. I was born in 46, old. so it's 10 years younger than me. Yeah, so. I'm 76, the car's 66. 66 years old, yeah. Yeah. You gotta pull that real hard, Liam. Was he gonna do the hood? Yeah. Anyway. <coughs> Definitely uh, will warm you up. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I left the standard Ford regulator in. Now this this is a one wire alternator, so they have they, and this thing for the idiot light here, and of course it comes with instructions and everything. Um, but it, it it definitely wakes up these old generator cars. I'll tell you right now. Um, and that's that's it. Yeah, the hood's nice and straight looking. Yeah, yeah. Now I have the original air cleaner. It has the uh, a rubber seal on it that you see. It's oh here. yeah, yeah. I didn't. So it had some kind uh, of ram air. The car, the, the, this uh, uh, car came with the engine dress-up kit, which was a chrome lid on the air cleaner, and I have the chrome fan. <coughs> of course, this is a high, high output cooling fan, and I, I'm, I'm not using that. But that stuff will come with the car, including the, the teapot holly and the original intake manifold. This is an aluminum manifold here that flows more air and makes more power. It's a, it's a blue thunder manifold. And of course I use a die grinder and put the firing order in there. Which is like the other one. But they got the, they even have the, uh, you can see the, the uh, factory uh, part number on it. You know. That's cool. And that was, that's it. All right, well I think that wraps up the video. Yeah. We'll take her home and uh, if right. anybody has any questions, yeah. Just write them down below and I'll relay yeah, them to the yeah, old man. Yeah, yeah. So. That's a good car. A good solid car.